if you want to start alarm at, I'm the guy who can show you how. I just want to live, live free. I love the feeling. I don't care what anybody says. The number one thing is location. You could be the worst operator in the world with a great location and you're gonna make money. You could be the best operator, genius, do everything right with a location and you're gonna lose money, guaranteed. Location, if you look around here, these are apartments. There's a whole separate apartment buildings. There's apartments over there, red ones. There's the blue ones. There's a part different brick apartments over here. There's some wood apartments over here. There's something like 35 different apartment complexes. Do some of my washers and dryers? Yeah. Do most of them? No. So as you saw, like there's tons of apartments everywhere. There's a few of them that actually had advertised that there's washers and dryers available. But for the most part, they got little laundry rooms. They got big families. There's no way those laundry rooms are going to be able to cut it. Especially when you take apartment laundry room versus a laundromat laundry room. We use gas fire and we can dry clothes in 20 minutes. You go to an apartment or even a house, it's going to take you an hour, hour and a half to be able to dry clothes. Great location, you could be a poor operator, but if you have a great location and you're a great operator, the sky's the limit. Like there's literally no limit to the amount of success that you can have. Location is paramount. Location number one. Second thing, parking. These people are physically carrying bags of clothes and tons of stuff to fill the whole car up. If they cannot get to your location and park in your location and walk a few feet to get in it, they're not gonna come. They're just not gonna do it. You need at least 20 parking stalls, probably 30. And if you build a 5,000 square foot laundromat like I do, you're gonna need 40 parking stalls. If you have a 5,000 square foot laundry with four parking stalls, I don't give a shit how good the location is, you'll never make it parking lot. I mean, look at this parking lot. I got so much parking here that I actually use U-Haul. And when it comes to parking, as you can see, almost every location I have, you can pull right up to the front of the building. You have a short walk. You're able to go get a cart, pull it out, load it up in the car and push it into the laundry. Like you're not crossing a giant parking lot. You don't have a lot of traffic sweeping by. I mean, especially when these people have kids, right? Like if you got a bunch of kids and a ton of laundry, and you're trying to like cross a bunch of busy lanes of traffic in a shopping center, that's no good. Like they need to be able to pull up to the building, be able to pull out and not worry about their kids getting clipped in the street walking into it. So sometimes there's a lot more U-Hauls here because of all these apartments. So all these people are moving in, moving out. So this is actually just ancillary income. And the best thing is when U-Haul got here and it was COVID, they started putting these boxes. So it's like you just put your code in your phone, it gives you a code, you unlock the box and you run it out. We don't even have to rent the motherfuckers out. We get paid for these people to go on their phone, unlock a box, start the car and leave. Like a fucking no brainer, no brainer. The third thing is literally the easiest thing. I mean, it's almost even stupid I have to mention it, but you gotta keep it clean. Nobody wants to go to a dirty, shitty dump to clean their laundry. They want a nice, clean place that's taken very good care of. All right, so cleanliness is another, another thing. And we just had a tent leave. If you look at this place, like this is why we pay attendance. Like this place is immaculate. I mean, even the tables, like this parking lot, they're pretty fully staffed. And we're gonna have a few things, like there's gonna be some dryer sheets or there'll be some different things like that, but you can't, you can't keep on top of everything. If you look at this place, it's clean. My people clean the laundromat. That is what their job is. They're not doing the wash dry fold. They're not doing the other bull crap. Like I have three things. I tell my employees that I expect them to be polite and professional, to show up and work, and to keep the place immaculately clean. That's the only three things I say. You do those three things, you and I will never have a problem. So I've never been upset. When I show up and a customer is talking to the attendant and they're laughing, that is not a problem for me. That is their job. Like I want them to be making people feel warm and welcome. I want them to be welcoming and show the best side of the laundromat. Like a good personality is paramount. So along with U-Haul, we have the vending. It, vending, I could take it or leave it. Like we make money on it, yeah. I mean, we probably do $1,000 a week. In some locations, this one might be 500 because there's a grocery store right behind it. But we got Bitcoin ATM. That's another ancillary income when you're in the laundromat business. And then you got the scale games. These things, I'd tell you what they make right now, but they, you wouldn't even believe me. <laughs> The worst part is the NCS makes the most money on these things, but we were just on the phone and like the guy was telling me, so I have an employee that plays these and he says that every jackpot's been on this buffalo. But he says that he doesn't even play these anymore because he says he actually, what do you say, he says he was at Saddle Creek, he put 20 in and he won 30 and he just got the hell out of there. I started a laundromat business because as far as business goes, it's pretty cut and dried. Like we have some products that we sell in vending machine, but we don't have accounts receivable. We don't have any of that stuff. Like the stuff that you have to deal with in a normal business, the net 90, the net 60, all this stuff. Essentially what I'm doing is I'm buying and reselling utilities. I get a bill for gas, water, and power. And as long as I pay that, the machines run. As long as I pay my attendance, 
they show up to work. As far as businesses go, it, it's not passive. It's not just go collect quarters like some dumb fuckers will say, but it is relatively easy. If you're gonna start a business, this is a relatively easy one to run and operate. Four strike fold, pickup delivery versus self-serve. I'm all self-serve. What I found when we were doing wash dry fold is I'd be paying an attendant $15 an hour to clean the place and keep it nice, but instead they'd be just working on people's clothes. Those people show up and they do payment and they put in their pocket. Well, so now I just paid someone $15 to run their side hustle and my laundromat looks like shit. So, I mean, I just got rid of it. I have 12 laundromats. I don't have time to fucking babysit these people. So if you're a guy that's gonna run one laundromat, you're gonna spend your whole entire life in that laundromat and die in that laundromat, by all means, wash, dry, fold. If you wanna live your life and not have to micromanage every damn aspect and worry about people stealing from you because everybody's paying in cash, Wash dry fold is not for you. So there we have it, the three most important things to running a laundromat. There's a whole hell of a lot more, but I'm getting tired, I don't have time for this shit, so it's time for you to get the fuck out. One more fucking thing, like and subscribe, now get the fuck out. I just wanna live, live free. I love the feeling that you give me.